Welcome to session two in my All About Bees Queen Rearing video collection. Session one was an introduction to queen rearing and I covered the difference between queen rearing and queen breeding. I covered stock selection criteria and general queen rearing principles. You know, when I retired as a commercial beekeeper in 2020, I was using a system of grafting larvae and raising them in queen right colonies, but I started queen rearing using the Miller method. This is one of the simplest method of all queen raising methods and is suited for a beekeeper wanting to raise a small number of queens, maybe eight or nine. And today I'm going to tell you how to do it. If you are enjoying these videos, please click the like and subscribe button below, especially if you don't want to miss out on any new videos. You can support my channel by buying me a beer or donating to my PayPal page. The links are in the banner at the top of the page. I also welcome any comments or questions. So let's get started. This system was devised by the American Dr. Charles C. Miller in about 1911. He also designed the Miller feeder and other items of equipment, including queen introduction cages. There is no special equipment needed for this method. No grafting of larvae is involved and it is not expensive. Shaped comb or foundation is placed in the middle of the brood box for your selected quality queen to lay in. Three or four days later, when eggs and young larvae are present, you brush off the bees and cut to a sawtooth shape and the frame is then placed into a prosperous dequeen cell builder colony to finish off. Cutting the frame or comb in this way gets lots of queen cells on the margins, as in this diagram, and these are more easily individually harvested using scissors. In essence, you select the hive from which you will secure the larva. This is the breeder colony. You prepare a frame of wax foundation for the bees to draw out and the queen to lay in. You can use either deep frame with deep foundation or worker cell wax foundation. And remember that ideally you want it unwired. So, here are two ways of creating the frame of wax foundation. Remember, no wires. You can do it in strips, as in the top photograph, or in a sore tooth shape, as in the bottom photograph. Both options will work given the right conditions. However, in my experience, the bees don't always draw out the foundation. So, for best results, if you have it available, use freshly drawn comb, as shown here, again, in strips or sore tooth shape. Let's have a close look at the Miller Method timetable. You start off at day zero, insert the prepared frame into the selected breeder colony. This can be foundation, cut into the V-shape, or better still, as I've just said, virgin drawn comb, as the queen lays more evenly because the comb is already built. Virgin comb is preferable to that which has had brood in it as it can be difficult to cut through the tougher cocoons and the bees draw out queen cells better on new comb. You must have a good nectar flow on or you must feed one-to-one -one sugar syrup for the bees to draw out the wax and I would recommend using a contact feeder. Place the miller frame in the centre of the brood nest of the selected stock hive. The hive must be level for wax to be drawn straight and make a note of the date and time. On day four, remove the frame, brush off the bees and cut it so that you end up with a sore tooth shape. You need to trim the bottom margins of the comb so that the cells at the margins contain the youngest larvae, one to one and a half days old. We'll go over this in more detail in a moment. The bees will have built more wax and you trim away this added comb so youngest larvae are at the edge, just like in this photograph. Avoid tilting them on the frame as the newly built wax which is unwired may break free and fall off. After trimming, destroy two larvae and leave one larva along the cut edges on both sides. If you look at the photograph, the two red cells are destroyed larva, leaving one viable larva every third cell. Work as quickly as possible, about 10 minutes at the most, and avoid sunlight or wind to prevent drying out the larva. You can use a damp paper towel or or the towel itself to cover larvae and prevent them drying out. You then need to insert the frame into a strong dequeen cell raiser colony. 
and the nurse bees will continue feeding the larvae. On day six, open up and check the queen cells. And hopefully you will see the queen cells on the cut edges, just like in this photograph. Or like this photograph. Thanks to Jerry Collins for these photographs, by the way. Place the frame back into the cell raiser colony and one week later, seven days, the queen cells should all be sealed. I think if you look at this, there are about nine sealed queen cells on this frame. On day 14, the sealed queen cells are removed and inserted into queenless nukes or apodes or other mini mating hives. These have previously been stocked with bees. But the entrances are closed to prevent the bees absconding and they are placed in a cool place somewhere inside. Because you previously destroyed two out of every three larvae, it is now very easy to cut out the seal queen cells. You still have to be very careful with them, however. You can introduce one right queen cell into a nuke by inserting it between the top bars like this. Or you can make a depression in the face of a brood frame and stick the queen cell to the frame like this. Please note I would only insert the one queen cell, not two. If you use two, the emerged queens could fight and kill each other or one could scarper with a swarm. For added security, you may want to protect the queen cell as sometimes the bees will tear them down, often preferring to raise their own queen. You can use queen cell protectors like these in the photograph or as an alternative, you can wrap the cell in kitchen foil or sellotape, leaving just the tip of the cell uncovered. I will be covering the use of apodea mating hives in another session, but briefly, you stock the mini hive with a third of a honey jar of young nurse bees from the Super Bowl do, add fondant, which is housed in a cook comb container, add the right queen cell, as you can see in the photograph there, keep the entrance closed and the hive in a shaded place inside for about three days before moving it to its place in the apiary in the evening. And then you open the entrance. By this time, the queen should have emerged and she will fly and mate from the apodea and hopefully be laying three weeks later. So on day plus 17 in the evening, place the apodeas outside and open the entrance. As I say, leave alone for three weeks and then check for eggs and brood. You want to see sealed worker cells. Here are some possible complications with the Miller method. As previously mentioned, sometimes the bees do not draw out the foundation. In the absence of drawn comb, as described earlier, your only option is to feed more or wait until there is a nectar flow on. Sometimes the bees fill the drawn comb with nectar and the remedy for this is to move the hive to another part of the apiary, which will lose you some of the forages and it will reduce the nectar intake. If the larvae have developed beyond one day after hatching, so they were, they were larger than the size of an egg, it is easy, easy to simply start the process over again. So here is a, a review of the timetable, and you might want to copy this in a screenshot or some other way. The Miller frame is inserted into your selected breeder colony on day zero. Four days later, you take the frame out and trim back the wax to the sword tooth shape, as described earlier. Also on day four, the Miller frame is now placed into a populous dequeen cell raiser colony. Check this after six days and hopefully you will see queen cells being built with larvae inside and they'll be being fed royal jelly. On day 14, the now ripe queen cells can be carefully cut out with scissors and placed into mating nukes. Keep the entrances closed and the nuke inside in a cool place for three days. The queen will emerge on day 16 and on day 17 in the evening. Place the nuke outside in the apiary and open the entrance. The new queen will fly and mate from here and in three weeks time, if all goes well, she should be laying. You need to see frames of sealed worker brood before you can say it has been successful. That is the end of session two. I have given you all the information you need to have a go at the Miller method of queen rearing. 
and I really do encourage you to give it a go and let me know how you get on. In the next session, I'll be covering everything you need to know about making and using nucleus hives. And I will show you how you can create six or more nukes from one very strong colony. If you are enjoying these videos, you can buy me a beer or make a donation to my PayPal account by following the links in the page banner. Thank you to those of you who have already bought me a beer. Your donation will help with the running costs. That's all for now. Adios amigos.